guys, it's Showcase. Welcome back to my channel. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We're actually on Belinda's channel today and I'm her guest. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Belinda and I go by the name of Belinda Chosen. Welcome back to my channel, guys. So today I have Casey with me, my sister in Christ, my friend, you know. So we are going to talk about, you know. Listen, we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about why are we single, though? <laughs> I love when we talk about guys and, like, singleness and, like, yeah. stuff like that. It's, like, a hot topic. But, yeah, the topic for today is I've loved but never been in love. Mind you, this was like last week when we were at dinner and mm -hmm. Belinda literally said this line and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm writing this down mm -hmm. because that's that's like an amazing title. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's get it. Let's get it. So when you hear I've loved and never been in love, how like, like how does that make you feel? Like that phrase, like I've loved, but I've never been in love. Mm -hmm. Like when I when I hear that, I think of yeah. it's like a one sided thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you know there have been so many times in the past where I've loved on so someone so much, mm -hmm. but I never got the same amount of love back, mm -hmm. and I always like found myself to be like you know in a position where like they didn't appreciate my worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they didn't really see me for me. So it's like, I loved, mm -hmm. but was that love? Was that love? You know, so, no. yeah, like, that's, like, my interpretation. What's yours? So for me, it's just, like, I've loved hard before. Like, I really loved, and, but I've never been in love because I always set myself to fall in love. Because mm -hmm. I'm, like, I can't fall in love with a man that's not emotionally available. Girl. That's a no for us, gentlemen. If you're that's not emotionally available, <laughs> no. But you know what, and 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 fairly mm -hmm. enough, like I'm I'm pretty sure there's men out there too mm -hmm. who are looking for that as well. So yeah. um, I think in people in general, it's just like if the emotional intelligence is not there, it's like how do you connect past, you connect? past the physical? Exactly, especially when us women connect emotionally. So I couldn't fall in love with those guys because I'm just like, nah, like why should I give my all to the person that's not giving me the same back? Yeah, you know. So I could, I've never been in love. I'm excited to fall in love one day and know what that feels like. Yeah, I know. Like it's, it's, it's wild because I used to be in a relationship when I was in my mid twenties, <laughs> not too far away. Girl, you're young. Not too you're far like away. 20. <laughs> um, but no, but like in my mid twenties, I remember, um, being with someone and I was like, at the time uh -huh. I was like, yo, uh -huh. I'm so in love with this guy, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, it's a while now, fast forward to like now, being in my 30s, mm -hmm. I'm just like, girl, I would never let someone go in a relationship like that. Because, like, I, again, just putting up with things that we thought was like in the name of love, mm -hmm. and then we do so much for it, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's one of the, like, the wildest things that you've done in the name of love? Playing wifey um, roles with no title in situationship because I thought if I'm the best person I can be and treat them well, They'll be available yeah and it doesn't matter you, even if you give wifey duties to a man who doesn't deserve it if he doesn't appreciate you you're still gonna feel like you're absolutely alone, you know so i used to play wifey cook this that you know like it was just like why am i doing this yeah and it doesn't matter like as much as i did all those things i just didn't feel that love back you know and I just realized when I look back, I'm like, because they were not the one for me. Mm -hmm. And I was not, not able to fall in love because I never saw a future with them. Right. No. You know how you said you never saw a future with them? Mm -hmm. Girl, I used to force a future with them. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would like literally sit there and be like, oh my gosh, you know, like this house and like this, this and that, that and da, da. Yeah. And it was like, all of that yeah. was like, my wants yeah and it never aligned with homeboy no nope. it never did and nope. he would just kind of coast along with it mm -hmm. and i'm just like and you know and i learned the hard way mm -hmm. and the hard way is obviously the breakup yeah like when you're like shattered <sighs> like done breakup 
my gun. So, yeah, so I would, I would force, like, that. Yeah. I used to think maybe there was something wrong with me that this guy just never, you know, really make that commitment towards, like, you know, settling down and, you know, being married and stuff like that. And then as time went on, somehow, some way, they, they always tried to come back. And most of them sim said similar things, like, you're the girl that got away. You were, you were the right girl at the wrong time. But at that time, if I'm already over you, don't even try. Yeah. I'm the kind of person, it's either I'm in or I'm out. When I'm out, there is like, no going bye. back. Like, I'm out. I'm out. So, what have you been learning in your sing season of singleness? Oh, my goodness. In my season of singleness, mm -hmm. I have been learning the importance of being patient and mm -hmm. obedient. Mm, because girl the temptation is real the temptation is real and it's just it's just so interesting because I think like we sometimes move without intention mm -hmm. so I think in the last year I've been really really like mm -hmm. making sure that I'm moving with intention yeah. and so if I want to go out with this person or if I'm talking to this person or interacting the way you interact with people too mm -hmm. I'm just like why am I doing it mm -hmm. Because you know what I mean? Because you know where it's going to lead to. Yeah. Now, if you don't want it, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. So again, and I think it's... And, and then even with the people that God might send to you. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, you got to chill. Like, you got to be patient. Because you never know if that could be your partner. Mm -hmm. Or that could be that friend. Mm -hmm. That could be that house. Like, whatever, right. in, a, in any given situation. Yeah. So for me, like, in the season of singleness, like, yeah, like, I've been really... Like patience and obedience, and it's hard sometimes. Girl, it's hard. Like so, so hard. It's hard. And speaking of patience, I feel like that's where, even though I, I feel like I've been patient, I've intentionally not dated for five years. Not gone out on a date, not even one date. Like every date that I've been asked out on, I said no. And even when I've agreed, the night before, I'm just like, listen, I'm sorry. So is that like, so like, how do you differentiate from that? And then what if you're actually losing out? Like not losing, you're never going to lose out if it's for, it's meant for you. But what if like, that is something God set up for you? So in my time of singleness in that five years, what I've been doing is getting, getting closer to God. Mm -hmm. And my Lord, I want to recognize your voice because you're my father, you're my friend, you're my savior, you're my everything. Just like if I close my eyes right now and I hear you talking in the crowd, I know it's you, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, I want to hear your voice so much in the, in the sense where it's like a pin drop like and i want you to take control of my life like i literally like surrendered all like my will to god yeah, okay. and my lord like you care about the little stuff so if this date if you put in my heart to go then i'll go if you don't put in my heart to go then i won't go for five years for five years so there was a guy that chased me down and zara uh yeah what yeah, and she's going on Zara. I'm like, ooh, he's cute. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, he's cute. So I gave my, and she's like, I don't want you to get my number out like that. I'm like, nah, he's this guy's. Like, gave my number, and like, he messaged me right away. He's like, oh, I'd like to take you out and stuff. He's like, you know, I'll drive him. Like, no, nah, I don't know you like that. I'll drive my own car. And we set it up, and literally, like, two days before, I just felt my heart gone saying, don't waste your time. Wow. That's. When you're obedient and you just hear the, the, the word, like the voice of God, like he will literally tell you yeah. beforehand. Yeah. And those are the things I used to miss when I didn't have a relationship mm. with God. And that's how I used to end up in those situations. God is just like, don't go. You're wasting your time. Yeah. I'm just like, but it doesn't hurt. But I'm just like, but he's like, but you could literally take control and lead me. So this is what I'm doing. Don't go. So I, I took my final message. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out. At all. Wow. At all. In two weeks or three weeks, will somebody ask me out again? Yeah. And I said no. So she's getting the dates. Like she technically is getting. Like girl, I don't. I, <laughs> nobody's even asking me for a date. So <laughs> that's because God knows. Like no, you not. Like you definitely not ready. Like yeah. And I think it's our, yeah. And I think what you said, it's like I really want to get closer to God. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely committed to that. Like especially this year. Yeah. Got baptized. Hey! Shout out! Hey! Heaven is partying. I'm gonna bless like, my sister. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, it's been such an amazing journey so mm -hmm. far. Like, it's been definitely hard, especially, like, coming from a, you know, a different religion as well. Yeah. So, 
definitely still navigating some of the challenges, mm -hmm. but I think like for me, like I feel like for the first time in my life, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm on the right path, which is so wild because people, you know, like, again, like just kind of like who I am and what I do for a living and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, people think like, okay, yeah, like she, she appears to be very like head on and everything's mm -hmm. good and she's career driven yeah. and got this whole like online platform and all this stuff. But it's like for the longest time, like there was such like a big, big like emptiness wow. inside my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like, you know, this year is like the year that I felt like wow. God literally coming like closer to me because I was like crying out for him. Mm -hmm. I really was like, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, when I say crying, I'm, I'm talking about literally crying out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I shared this with yeah. you before. Like I would go to church and like I would come home and I'd start crying. Wow. And I didn't know at the time. I was just like, what is this? Like, is this something like all Christians are experiencing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that? But, um, it was just that journey and like, yeah, like I was so empty before and now I don't feel so empty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, I think one of the things about like, just like in life and in society in general is that like, we're constantly looking to be with people, which is fine because naturally human beings and even God wants us to be with someone. But I think you have to like pause and reflect on like, why are you looking right now? Right? Why, why are you looking? Because have you looked inside first? Preach, girl. Let's just end it here. Like, have you looked inside first? That's a word right there. Like, if you take nothing else out of this video today, have you looked inside first? Yeah. And 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 listen, like, it gets to the best of us. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, right now, like, I, again, when people see me, like, I'm a therapist by profession. Mm -hmm. So someone can look at me and be like, how does this girl not have done this work? <laughs> or like, you know, whatever. And it's just like, y'all, listen, the work hits different when God's with you. It's different. <laughs> Sometimes it even hurts. Right? Because mm -hmm. you have to like get rid of things and just leave things. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. How do you feel about letting go? How do you feel about letting go and especially taking direction from God when you've held such importance to certain people and things letting go used to be so hard for me because i'm like i spent time and i invested in this relationship like i know it'll probably feel better if i have if i let it go but i'm like it's it, I, I like I, I i don't know this sounds weird it's just like i like the way it hurt because i was so used mm. to being in that place wow i'm like i'd rather hold on and go through the hurt than just to have it to get over and let it go mm. And as I started growing with the Lord, and I, re and I learned the importance of obedience. Not because I wanted to let go, but because I wanted to obey God. Yeah, absolutely. So by obeying God, I was able to let go. And then I just realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, wow, I, I deserve better. Mm -hmm. Whether it was a friendship or a relationship. And I, I realized, like, it wasn't benefiting me in any mm -hmm. way, mentally, physically, like, emotionally, like, psychologically. Like, why did I hold on to that? And a lot of us hold on to things because we've invested time. Absolutely. And that is like, okay, this friendship, I've been with, I've been with this, this friend since high school. Mm -hmm. You know, but then I had to cut a friend off not too long ago. I've known him from high school. I'm like, you're toxic. And it's not worth me holding on because I've known you for like over a, year, a couple of years, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, listen, we trick ourselves when we're putting quantity over quality. Amen. Like, do not get that twisted mm -hmm. because it's not about the 15 year relationship that yeah. you had with this friend, yeah. but we did high school and college together. Yeah. Okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. You did it together. Mm -hmm. But right now, is it serving you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, if we're going to be very honest, like, yeah. is it serving you? Yeah. And also, everything that I talk about now, like, I've, I've lived it for myself. Mm -hmm. So, because I, because again, I would not want to speak on an experience that I never lived, but I've been living with people, um, you know, in my life mm -hmm. and <laughs> never checking them or not, and never checking myself. Mm -hmm. Like, is it serving you? Like intentionally, like how are they going to benefit your life and yeah. vice versa too. It's not obviously just about like, you know, reaping, but it's like back and forth, right? Like how do you give and how do they give, give on to you? Exactly. And they say people you surround yourself with tells a lot about who you are, mm -hmm. you know? So 
to be honest, like if it was up to me to let go of something, it's still hard. Yeah. But if God is the one that's saying go and let it go, I'm like but Linda's like, bye. Like, bye. The Lord says, go. You gotta go. I don't play. <laughs> no like, hesitation. I've seen the benefits and the fruits of being obedient. Yeah. So I do not play. If God says, cut it, I'll cut it and I'll go cry. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go cry. Yeah. And, try to, and get over it. But if it's up to me and I'm trying to think, okay, should I let this go? Is it like, if it's just me, it, it's hard. Yeah. But one last step since I go, God will let it go. I'm just like, peace out. And I think it's a, like, it's such a good place to be in when you have that relationship. And it's just so wild to me because for me, it's like I've never had a connect, like a relationship with God before. Mm. Right? So last year when I started coming to church, yeah. um, and then like learning and, and still learning, like obviously, mm -hmm. um, so new to me, but it's just, you actually like live, walk, move, like everything differently. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you're, you're constantly like, in conversations with God mm -hmm. or trying to anyways mm -hmm. right um, and the importance of prayer I never used to pray before like I remember growing up in the Hindu family and you know my mom would be like come pray come pray and all that stuff is like cool but it, it, again it was never it was never taught to me the way that you know how I'm learning it now mm -hmm. like in the church mm -hmm. um, you know being Christian now and yeah. prayer is so important and then you know obviously like reading sermons and Continuously learning, but yeah, like prayer. Listen, y'all, I'll be driving <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> I'm like, what's up, God? <laughs> I don't know if you're busy right now. Yep. Just wondering if we can have a moment. Yep. Um, and you know, to me, I'm just like, wow, if nobody heard me like talk to God like that, so right? They'd be like, what is she doing? Is that is not formal. That's not proper. That's not crazy. But at the end of the day, it's like you're talking. To, like you do what you gotta do. You like do what you gotta do. And I'm just like God. That's my God is my G. Like you mess with me, I'm gonna tell on you. I dare you to mess with me. I'm gonna take it to God. Facts. And you know what? Like just two days ago, or sometime this week, I got really emotional because I thought about all the beautiful daughters of God mm. who are ready and so desire to like get married. I'm like, Lord, like they've been praying, fasting. Like I know a few, or people who send me messages and stuff like that. It's just I'm like, Lord, where are your sons? Are you guys there? Are you there? Where are your sons? You know, where are your sons in the church? I'm like, why does it seem like more women are zealous for you than men? Wow. And I'm like, this has to be an attack from the enemy to take down our, our men. Mm. You know, there's just a, I don't know, like, where are the men? I, I, I don't have the answer to that. Honestly, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's a question mm -hmm. that we all ask, regardless if you're from Toronto, if you're mm -hmm. from London, if you're in Atlanta, um, wherever you're from, it's like, that seems to be the question. Like, we know this, we know that the ratio, obviously, mm -hmm. there are more women yeah. than men. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, I don't know. Do you feel like, because we also know this, that like not everybody gets married. No. Like, you could have, like, I'm pretty sure there's someone that has the closest relationship to God that's obedient, that does things that God wants them to do, but God doesn't put a partner with, like, I think about that all the time yeah. because I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, if God wants us to be with someone, yeah. mm -hmm. like, how come it's not granted to everyone? Because some people have the gift of singleness. What like, is the like gift Paul. of singleness? Like, he was so zealous and so in love with God that he just wanted to do God's work. Wow. And he stays single. But um, I love God. Uh, I don't have that gift. You know, God created me with a desire yeah. to be married. And I, I, I think what I'm thinking is that it's not like there's no men out there. Mm -hmm. It's just that we as daughters of God, we have godly standards. Mm. And not every man out there can meet those godly standards. It's hard to meet a guy these days that you tell him, I'm, I want to wait till marriage. Mm, that's a big one. That's a big one. That is a big one. Yeah. And wh what do you think contributes to that? Oh, wait, and also, are these also like godly men or they're not? Um, don't get it twisted. There's some wolves in the church. Okay? That's why, like, you have to pray for the sermon. The sermon is very, very important. But it won't, like... In the churches, there's still stuff, you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But like, even like, let's say guys outside of the church, I dare you to try it They're, and tell them like, I'm not having sex before marriage. I'm like, oh. 
Bye. I remember this guy told me last year, and we were talking, and he was like, are you single? I'm like, yeah. He's like, why are you single? I'm like, well, I have godly standards, and I'm not just going to submit under anybody's authority. Because, you know, when, you, when you're married, you submit to your husband's authority as you submit to Christ. And then he's like, and then I'm like, first of all, it's hard to find a man who don't want to have sex until marriage. Mm. You know what he told me? He's like, if you're not having sex until marriage, then nobody's ever going to be with you. That's false. Of course. Because God has a person for you. Exactly. And the right one will focus on everything else but that. Yeah, imagine like a relationship without sex. I feel like our head is at a better space where you're not like, you don't have, you don't have that soul tied. Like yeah. you're not physically tied because... When you put sex in the relationship, it's just a whole diff different ballgame. Absolutely. Literally, it's like you, you two become one and there's all this attachment and this stuff that you can't let go. Yeah. You know? And we also, like, jump into, um, you know, embracing each other in that way. Yeah. And then it's just like, honestly, I, I, it's almost as if it's, it's kind of like this, like, it's like a drug, right? Yeah. It, and it's, it, it's also a temporary fix. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Because what happens after if you do have sex? Yeah, I seen this video on TikTok yesterday. It was a girl. It was just like she was playing it out. She had sex with this guy, and as soon as they were done, he got up. He's like, "Bro, I, I gotta go." And then she's just like, "But do you want to stay? Do you want to see?" And then he's like, "Nah, I gotta go with the boys." And then he left, and she was literally in her bed bawling. Like she's forty five minutes of pleasure, or however long it was. Did not it was not worth her not in an emotional state feeling absolutely after she just gave herself to that person yeah. and that person didn't even care i'm like you see like i'm like i want to just i want to give myself to my husband you know I, always, I also feel like these conversations are not really had with um us when we're younger no 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 to that level girl nobody ever talked to me about sex in my family well first of all we're also racialized folks yeah. let's be very honest yeah okay they're not if we're gonna keep sex. it 100 <laughs> yeah um because i knew <laughs> You know my mom and dad did not, <laughs> especially in a South Asian yeah. household. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Definitely not a conversation, but it's just so interesting because you know, like when I have children, I'm gonna have these conversations yeah. with my children and yes. ex you know explain to them the importance of yeah. you know first of all obviously raise them, mm -hmm. um, in the church, and um, just like really helping them understand like the importance of having a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and that would be their relationship, right? With that, what, whatever that entails, but just really teaching children at such a young age, you know, the importance of connecting emotionally. Yeah. If you don't teach them, they're going to learn it from somewhere else. Their yeah. friends are going to teach them and then it's not going to be the right way. Yeah. So I'm just like, don't be afraid to talk to the kids about sex. Absolutely. Cause they're going to learn it some way or the other somewhere. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, I wish somebody talked to me about sex when yeah. I was younger. And I wish somebody sat me down and taught me about the world instead Absolutely. of having to find it out for myself. Yeah. You know? And I think these conversations also need to be had more with men yeah. um, than women. Because I feel like women always get the load of like, don't do this, don't do that, wear this, wear that, and this and that. And there's so much um, kind of like control over women. Mm -hmm. But then it's like with the men, it's like, yeah, y'all are men, so do what you need to do. And it's just, just like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. Pull in the men and you know and, and the boys and say, well, this is why you should respect your body. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think that's also important too. And I feel like it's hard. Like we see what's happening in, in the world, yeah. you know, um, and where women are not feeling safe. They can't even be with themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's, it's devastating. But I mean, I don't know. Like, do you feel like things like this happen in the world? Like, what is God trying to show us? Like, when it comes to... When it comes to just in general, like, people suffering in these ways. Like, suffering is inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's something that came with sin. Yeah. Because God didn't create us to, to suffer. But because sin entered into the world, it comes with suffering, diseases, mm -hmm. sickness, and all of this. But there's a, there's a greater promise where God says, like, there's a place that there'd be no more tears, no more sickness. And that's the, the purpose it was meant to be in the first place until, you know, like mm. Adam and Eve sinned. So it's just like this present suffering does not compare to the glory that's going to be revealed in Christ Jesus. So it's just like we only suffer for a, a little while, but it's not temporary because this world will pass away, mm. you know. 
But in, in the times where I've suffered personally, because everybody suffers differently, yeah, it's actually um, molded me into the woman that I am today. So every trials, every test that I've been through, I actually thank God for them. Absolutely. Because if it was not for those, I would not be sitting here with you right now. Amen. Like it shapes me and molded me to the woman of God that I believe that he purposed me to be in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the suffering may not feel good in the time, whatever your suffering may be. But if you allow God to use it to shape you, to mold you, like it's worth it. And you know what's cr the, the craziest part is like in your suffering, whatever season you may be in, whatever your area of suffering is, when you trust God completely and just surrender and just Oof. rely and depend and have faith in your suffering, you're going you're gonna to have joy. Yeah. There's still joy. Because you have faith. Because you have faith. And you trust him and you know he's God and you know he's gonna come through. So there's times where literally I should be crying. I'm smiling. You're just chilling, you're like, alright. And it's like Lord, I have so much peace. Because this is preparing me for what's to come. Mm. Because no season lasts forever. Yeah. Winter doesn't last forever. Right. It comes and go. Summer comes and go. Fall comes and go. You know, spring comes and go. You know, and it's so it's it's wild that you say seasons because I saw this video the other day and mm -hmm. um the woman in the video was literally saying that like talking about seasons mm -hmm. and saying that when it rains, what are you doing in the rain? Oh. Right? And it's like some people love the rain. Mm -hmm. So it's your choice. Yeah. Right? So whatever season that you're in, like you get to choose mm -hmm. how you're gonna react to that season. So if you want to react to that season and say, Well, you know, put yourself down and start doing like unhealthy things, um, in your life and you know all that stuff that's not really gonna get you out of that bad place mm -hmm. then that's a choice that you make so you have to believe that the choice it does fall in you right and I think like just leading into God yeah during those moments of suffering yeah because yeah it, it you know just being adversity mm -hmm. it, it does shape us like I wouldn't be here right now my my showcase page would not even be a thing mm -hmm. if I didn't get you know heartbroken if I didn't get dismissed if I didn't get you know, like, just, like, not seen by folks, right? Mm -hmm. Like, people would single-handedly be like, you're not it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, you're not it. You're not it. You're not who we're looking for. You're not it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, these are my best days. My best... I may have had, like, okay, if you look at it from, a, you know, look on the outside looking in, right? Okay, what you went through in your 20s, it seemed good. Like, but I'm like, no, because there was no Christ involved. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I found... Like, God found me when I was 23. Mm -hmm. And before then, I used to like question, like, why am I even here? Yeah. Why was I born? Like, it just felt empty. Nothing mm -hmm. fulfilled me. Not the relationship. No, not the friendship. You know, nothing. Mm -hmm. Not the job. Nothing fulfilled me. There's, it was always this big void inside of me. And then when God found me, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is the love I never even knew I needed. Yo, it hits different. It does. Like, it actually does because you get to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And even when you feel like you're not your best self, mm -hmm. he still has room for you like at the table. Yeah. And he still sees you and says it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you get to and you get to ask for forgiveness. Because one of the biggest things is as we go through those years of not knowing God and, you know, just sim single handedly doing things that we shouldn't be doing and and and, and you kinda like so much guilt and shame mm -hmm. in what we do. Mm -hmm. And it's like we can't even like forgive ourselves mm -hmm. and it's so wild because like sometimes if I so if I were to get into an argument with you mm -hmm. and I'm asking for like you know I'm like wait I'm like oh I don't know if Belinda's gonna like forgive me yeah a lot of people will have gotten that forgiveness from someone but it's like we can't forgive ourselves yeah. and that's what eats us up yeah so with God it's like I feel like he's teaching me just as much as how he forgives me all the time mm -hmm. he's teaching me like you need to learn to forgive yourself too 100% and it's I feel like I'm my own biggest enemy. Right? Right. I'm like, I get so hard on myself because I'm like, I know better, yeah. but I'm not doing better. Mm. So I, I beat up myself a lot and you're always like, show yourself the same grace I've given you. Oh my gosh. Like, be kind to yourself. Be and you know, and, and I preach this all the time because I, again, you know, doing a lot of the work that I do online around mental health um, awareness, it's, yeah, like we have to be kind to ourselves and God reminds us of that all the time. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourself and Literally, when you're stressed, it brings sickness to your body. <clears throat> it's like, I have to take care of this temple because this is the temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. 
Be wow. kind to yourself. Be good to yourself. Forgive yourself. Let go. Because you know how they're like, if you don't forgive others, God can't forgive you. Mm. Put yourself in that category as well. Absolutely. You need to forgive yourself and let go and let God. And it's just been an amazing journey with God. Just even like, first of all, my baptism was lit. Okay. Yo, it was lit. <laughs> it was lit. If y'all want to check out the video, go to Surf City um youtube channel yeah and check it out mm -hmm. um we'll link it we'll link it but um it was actually such a powerful 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 day mm -hmm. and um it was and you know obviously i've shared this with you mm -hmm. but i think just kind of like for the viewers but it was a one planned baptism at our church which was mine just one person getting baptized okay one yeah. i went into that water and got out it was a very emotional day because mm -hmm. i literally felt as if like all the years before me, I'm like, just, I'm, and it was like just surrendering. Mm -hmm. Just surrendering and just taking that oath of like, I want to literally, like, literally, I'm like, I want to fall in love with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I am willing to commit to you, right? And it was a big step. Mm -hmm. um, and coming out of the water and just kind of like feeling, um, and even till this day, like, it's, I don't, I, I don't, it's, I don't even know, like, amazing feelings. But even till this day, it's just such a special moment that I'm never going to forget. But I remember getting dressed and walking back into the sanctuary. And I heard Pastor Andrew, mm -hmm. like, start repeating some of the stuff for the baptism. Five people yeah. got baptized. Right after she got baptized. And she was supposed on the to spot. be the only one. On the spot. Yeah. Because Pastor Andrew felt it in himself. God put it in him mm -hmm. that he has to speak. To the people that day at church and five people came forward and got baptized oh, on the spot and it was so wild to me because and i want to share this story i mean and the reason why i'm sharing this story is because i i hope that you know it it resonates and you can relate it to your life is i had people come up to me and say you chose so i chose to open that door to, to being with god but I held the door open for five other people. So even in your journey, yeah. and, and you know, when you make decisions and with where you want to be and how you want to get there, just know there are other people who also are deserving of that. And that's what God taught me that day. Because God's just like, God's like, you're all my children. Wow. Right? Like, you're all my children. Mm -hmm. So, and God will use us. Yeah. He will use us to make moves and, and, and to just, like, ignite, like, just faith. Yeah. Ignite the faith, mm -hmm. right, in other people. Yeah. So, it's not, it's not just about you. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's about, like, and, and that's, like, the wild part is because... At first, I'm just like, okay, okay, it's me and you, it's me and you. But the community that I have built in the last year at this church. Amazing. Met Bill and Dad Church. Like, we clicked so quickly. Okay, it was just like a given. Um, but, I'm, but, but it's just, it's a community. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we have to stick together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't do life alone. Don't do life alone. Mm -hmm. Get plugged in somewhere. Yeah. Be around like-minded people. And don't be afraid to, like, move from spaces. Wow, that's a word for somebody right there. Like, move. Get up and move. Like, move away from, what, I don't care what it is, like, that friendship group, that neighborhood, that job. Move. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you're not stuck there. Some of us will sit and be like, oh, but, like, I don't know where else to go. Like, how am I supposed to start all over again? And... Like, don't be afraid to hit that restart button. And But when you hit that restart button, make sure God is with you when you hit it. Yes. That's that's key right there. Make sure God is with you. Because we can say, let me restart and then get into something so bad. Yeah. Because the enemy will have set it up for yeah. nicely for us. I, I'm stuck on what you said. And I feel like that's a word for a lot of people that's going to watch this. Move. That's the word. Like, move. There's a lot of you that... God has asked you to move and you're still in the same place because you refuse to trust him. Oh my gosh, this is turning to a prophetic. God is saying, move. He's told you to move. He's told you to trust him and you are still there. God says, move. 
those things you're praying for, you're not going to see until you move. When you move, there's a suddenly that goes along with it. Unexpectedly, suddenly, instantly, God would do it. So I don't know who it is for, but God said move and you know who you are. Take that step, trust him and move. You have nothing to lose. Everything that's in your head that you think you're going to lose mm -hmm. is not true. Yeah. Right? It's not true. That negative thinking, that distorted thinking, mm -hmm. right? Constantly putting yourself down, constantly feeling like you're not worth it. Yeah. It's not true. Those thoughts, not true. Yeah. You need to get up. You need to move. Change it. Wow. Wow. I've been asking, like, and, and, and you know, and, and I think we feel so powerful about this, too. Like, I can feel your energy, by the way. Yeah. Like, y'all, like, it just shifted in the room yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it just bit. shifted. This is, this is going a different direction right now. Yeah, it just literally shifted. Yeah. I just literally felt your energy. Like, yeah. after I said what I said, I felt your energy shift. Yeah. Um, and it's just wild. But it's just, like, we have to understand something. Mm -hmm. We are able to do anything if we just honestly trust in God, like, and that's the thing that I took away, like, so far, so far in my journey, mm -hmm. just trust God, trust God, like, talk to Him and pray, mm -hmm. pray, right? Yeah. A lot of you've been stuck in the same place for a long time in that relationship, in that abusive relationship. It's not serving you. God is saying you deserve better. You deserve better. God wants you to see yourself in the eyes of love, the way He sees you. A lot of you have held on because of time invested. And God is saying, cut it off and let it go. You need mm. to trust me because I have better for you. And God is saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I need you to literally hold on to my hands and let me lead you. Let me guide you. As soon as you are obedient and you move, the scale in your eyes are going to fall off. Like the scale in Paul's eye fell off and he was able to see. The scale in your eyes are going to fall off. So you're asking, well, how come I can't hear God? How come I can't see because you haven't done what he asked you to do the last time. You are living disobedience and disobedience is what's stopping you from really, really, really experiencing the powerful move of God. And God is saying, move, move. You know who you are. I, I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. And I'm trying to move on from this, but it's, it's very, I'm getting emotional. It's very important. And God is saying, some of you, there's a suddenly in store for you. There is, that word is suddenly. And I literally looked at what that word meant this morning. I was praying and it came to me and it has to do with instantly, immediately. So when you obey and obey the command that he gave you the last time, because one was saying like, God use me, God do this. Mm -hmm. But why you haven't obeyed the last thing he commanded you to do? Why would he give you the next level? So God's saying move. Whether it's the job, whether it's the relationship, whether it's even the location, yeah. Whatever it is that God is saying to move, move. And he literally wants you to move things out of the way. Make room for God so that God can move in your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we're so quick to get angry with God. Yeah. Because I remember doing that before. Yeah. Like, we're so quick to get angry. Mm -hmm. Why me? Mm -hmm. Why do I have this life? Yeah. Why didn't I get that opportunity? Why doesn't he like me? And I think, like, we're so quick mm. to fill our hearts with anger towards God. Yeah. But how come we're not quick to fill it with the Word of God? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how come, how, how come we don't move that as fast to be obedient, mm -hmm. to be patient, to be kind, to be loving? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we're not fast to move on those things, but we'll definitely be fast to, to, to grab, you know, the things that don't even serve us. Yeah. And just like, a lot of people ask me that same question. Why doesn't he like me? The question is, do you like yourself? Oof, girl, do you like yourself? This is uncomfortable, by the way. Yeah. Because these are like questions that you don't even want to ask yourself yeah. like these are like uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. that you have to get into because some of us are so scared to look ourselves in the mirror mm -hmm. 
and to accept the fact that like it's you yeah oh. yep mm. the lord says take off your mask a lot of us walk around with a mask because we know ourselves and we're afraid for people to see our true self it's okay not to be okay it's okay if you're struggling you're not meant to take on these things on your own. Ask for discernment. Ask God who you can trust. Tell God to bring people who are trusted, who are like-minded into your life, that can pour into your life. A lot of you have held on to that mask for so long. And I feel the Lord saying, take off your mask. This was the conversation that we all needed. Because I feel like, from my experience, getting together with girlfriends, yeah people, family, how many of those conversations were actually of value? Mm. But the value comes in where you place the value though. If you're constantly valuing like, yeah, like I want, you know, I want those things and I want to be there. I want to party. I want the, like, where do you place value? Mm -hmm. So I'm in a place in my life right now and I'm connecting with individuals. Mm -hmm like you, mm -hmm. where we understand that, you know, we're constantly wanting to do better. We're constantly wanting to grow. Yeah. We, we, we want to slowly keep removing the layers mm. of, of, you know, of sin. Yeah. Because we're being obedient and we're, and, and you know, and, and really just trying to understand <clears throat> what God wants for us. Yeah. But you have to move and you have to make sure that you place your value in the things that matter the most. Yeah. So pulling up to that party every weekend, mm -hmm. trying to find the right guy. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to get real. Yeah. Get real. Because <laughs> that, cause that was me. Yeah. Cause that was me. Like me too. I literally be like, okay, and you know, and we'll do it in the name of. Oh, I'm putting myself out there, girl. For what? For what? For what? For 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 what? Yeah. Because now I can say this. Yeah. Because I I move very differently now. I'm very intentional with where I go and who I'm with. You can't even you can't even come close to me in the, in, at this point, unless. I know that your heart is also with God because I'm trying my best. Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. We still sin, mm -hmm. but we get better, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We get better. But I had to check myself and be like, okay, it's like, where's your value? Mm -hmm. What do you value the most? And you know, I used to value people and things and whatever that, that wasn't serving me. And I thought it was. So for me to get right, I had to put my value, like I had to put God first. Yeah. Yeah. I never right. used to walk around and say I put God first. Wow. That's. I wow, never, that's I never used, because I never had a relationship with God. Yeah. I never grew up in a church. I never grew up with people. Um, you know, like obviously, like my, like my parents, like come from a Hindu family. Mm -hmm. So I never had exposure to that. And also like for me, for me, gosh, I don't know which family is going to see this. <laughs> But um, also for me, it's like, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, y'all. But for me, it's like, if, if, if the hint, oh man, I'm going to get in trouble. But this is for me. So from my experience, y'all, I'm, I'm, you know, putting it out there. Is I would sit here now and I was like, well, if those gods were the right God or if those gods were the ones that I was, I should be serving. And then how come like all these years and like, wait, like oh, how, how, how come? How come, how come I didn't have the, how come I didn't have the urgency? I didn't have that, that like aha moment last year where I'm just like, yo, I, like, I need this now. Like I, God, you're going to have to help me. You're going to pull me out now. Like I'm tapping in like SOS because mm -hmm. that's what I felt last year. Yeah. You know, it's wild because when I did that, God sent me a beautiful, beautiful soul. And now look where I'm at. Look where you're at. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, it's like the God I, I, I look up to, that I talk to, that I pray with, that I want to get closer to, is Jesus Christ. Wow. 
Hallelujah. That's amazing. Because how come I never had any of that for all of the other gods that were showing up? Wow. Because Jesus is the name above all names. There's only one God, and that's Jesus. I feel, I like, I don't even know what the word, like, I, am I lucky? Like, I, I don't know because people also live their life without finding him. Right? Everyone's calls. Right. Not everybody answers that call. Well, I answered. You answered it. I'm so glad I answered it. And you're chosen and you're predestined and purposed to use your story and your experiences to glorify his name. You literally sitting here saying those Hindu gods when it's this is you telling the world that God is God. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, that is God. And there's your like your story is gonna touch other people in that, mm -hmm. in that religion. Yeah. Because there's my some people are probably feeling that and they don't really they know that something is missing. They don't there's know. something's missing. Yeah. Girl, Belinda's got me all like, listen. Uh, <laughs> now, nah, Holy Spirit got us like, like, this This what happened to us last week when we went out to go eat. We, we're in a restaurant and we just started talking and it just, I just felt like I had to stand on the table and say, Jesus is Lord. Like, yeah. Because it got so intense. Like, that, I'm telling you, it's what God does. Like, and I love it. I honestly love it. I've been meeting so many people, you know, and mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I ask God, I'm like, hey, God, like, this person's here now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering like how they're gonna serve me in this yeah. season and vice versa. And is it just a season or is it gonna be a lifetime? Because yeah. it's just exciting because it also hits different when you're meeting people who are on the same walk. You connect in a different way. You connect in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, you're different. Listen, the elevation. Like you get elevated to a whole different level. Whole different level. <clears throat> Like, just, just every way. Yeah, in every way. In every way. Um, but it's, but yeah, but I liked what you said. God calls on everyone, but everyone, like, not everyone picks up Yeah. the call. Mm -hmm. Not everyone answers, wow. unfortunately. Yeah, not everyone, yeah. But if you answer that call and experience and taste God for yourself, He's better than anything you've ever tasted. Right. Like I said, I've never been in love with man, but I'm, I'm in love with Christ. I'm in love with God. Like, I'm crazy in love with God. Like, I'm so in love with him. I, you know what? I, and I never understood that before, you know? Mm -hmm. When people, like, and when I'm, like, I'm about to see it online, or, like, people that I know that are Christian, you know, before. And I would see Christians, like, so, like, in love. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen that with other religions. No. And, you know, and here's another, like, and I, and I want to say this because um, I think, you know, like obviously we know this there's so many religions mm -hmm. um and people choose to live that life and mm -hmm. and who they kind of you know look up to but i'm gonna be honest y'all do you go to church do you do you see the people that go to church and like worship i need worship in my life yeah. <laughs> Like, my entire playlist is different right now, by the way. Girl, I, I heard in your car. I'm just like, yes, girl, play it. My my entire playlist. And, like, I love the fact that there's, like, you know, like, gospel and worship music that are just, like, bumping. Yeah. Like, like, it's a it's, it's a whole jam, but yeah. then there's a word in it. Yeah. Like, there's, like, so many. It edifies you. Yeah. It lifts up your spirit. It gets you excited. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, like, what are you listening to? Yeah. What are you fitting yourself with? Ooh. What are you fit, feeding yourself with? With music alone, I feel like the, like it's a big thing. That's why the enemy uses it. Absolutely. And so it's just like, what are you listening to? What are you like meditating on? Because like, I remember like back in those days when I used to like listen to like I like R&B heavy, like 24, like those sad music. I'd be happy and I'd be listening to songs and all of a sudden like my mood mm. shifts. I'm like, why am I feeling this way? Because what you feed yourself yeah Literally. those lyrics in those yeah. rap the rap music yeah yeah like it's like and just like like it's just like yeah like look at those lyrics mm -hmm. like actually yeah, think yeah. about yeah what you are listening to and what you're saying you know like the anthems yeah. you know like for it's like mm. <laughs> just yeah like it's it, it just but it's so catchy it's so catchy and it's it trending is. And then obviously, like, listen, first of all, I think the government is the enemy. 
Yeah. One. I agree. Sorry, but sorry, not sorry. But it's just like there's so many ways in which the government can implement better living yeah. for citizens, but they choose not to. Yeah. Y'all are the enemy. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want us to live happy. No. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, you know, in the life that I've lived and like just like coming from like immigrant parents and like coming to this country and then being racialized, experiencing systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's just so many things. And I'm like, literally, I'm just like, y'all be promoting unhealthy stuff. Y'all, yeah. you guys want me to buy a $2 burger, Wait, can, but a, 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 a salad is like $10. You, you don't, you don't like us. Make it make you, sense. you don't want us to thrive. You don't want us to be healthy. You don't, you know, and like, even look at school curriculum. We don't have things in there. Like, like meditation mindfulness mental health like all of the things that we need to be actually like in tune and in touch with it, it was it, now they're implementing it like some schools by the way have it not even boards but schools yeah. um but yeah like it, it, it's just so wild to me it's like so yeah like what are you feeding yourself mm -hmm. what are you feeding yourself another question to ask yourself what are you feeding yourself because you because it's in this body's a temple it, it, it is it is it is in every area what are you feeding yourself are you feeding yourself that that you know is it music is it is it the kind of things that you watch you know what are you feeding yourself that you know is not contributing to your growth just reflect on it and yeah. i say this all the time like i run this in my workshops do it after sessions with my clients i say mm -hmm. reflect mm -hmm. i started engaging in reflection exercises consistently mm -hmm. in the last five years I have been able to navigate through the challenges of my life so much better than before. Because through reflection, and now, when it, because I have God there, through reflection, like I get to do that every day. Yeah. God, this is how I felt. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. This is what I didn't like about what happened. This is what I'm going to do differently. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. And I'm going to reflect on what I'm, I'm feeding into. Yeah. And one of the things I've learned that's very key and important in my relationship with God that I hold dearly is silence and solitude. Oof. Sometimes you need to step away from the crowd. And Remember, just be God. quiet and still before God. And just be in a space where you can talk to him and hear from him. Like yeah. silence and solitude is very, very important. You know? Yeah. And that's... Sometimes I'll just I'll walk out like and I'm like okay I'm yes I live alone yeah it's silence I'm like, I need a different space sometimes I'll drive to the park and I'll just sit in my car and I just talk to God I'm like oh I feel good or like I'll take a walk and I'll sit at a bench at a park and I'll just talk to God and meditate yeah. and I feel like in those moments is where I really hear God's voice mm. the loudest. Because wow. I'm in a space where I'm allowing him to speak and I, yeah. I, I've intentionally took away all the distraction. Too much chatter, too much noise. Too much noise. Sometimes you gotta, just like Jesus pulled away from the crowd. Sometimes you just have to pull away from the crowd and just have that time and that intimate moment with God. It will really do you well in your walk with God. It will grow you. You will start hearing God like never before. It's just like, and in a space where it's loud, I'm like, God, is that you? Is that me? But in a space where it's just me and the Lord, mm -hmm. it's quiet. No. I'm just like, I don't even question it. I'm just yeah. like, wow. Wow. Because that's, some, yeah. Some of you are afraid to be alone. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I used to be afraid to be alone because I was afraid that what if God comes and I'm not ready? You know, like I used to be afraid to be alone because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if I was fearful mm -hmm. of, of getting in touch with God, I was fearful of showing God like the sin, the scars, the th you know what I mean? And so I was, I was very fearful of being alone um but once i you know understood that i needed like i had no girl when i say i had no choice but this mm -hmm. like i don't know if like i got to a point where i'm just like i don't have anything else you can say of yourself which really made really showed you your need for god <clears throat> yeah and it's it's crazy because we don't always have to come to the end of ourselves to know that we need God. No. But most of us let it get there. Mm -hmm. And then like, ah, oh, Lord. And then you cry. Help. Out. Help. Please. Please help. 
please like i just yeah. can't do this no more yeah so we just we just we cry for help right we're just like i need you right now because mm -hmm. i can't do this no more yeah you know i can't do this no more i'm not sure where to go and i think yeah like in those moments where there's like almost like you know that, that desperation um and it's like yeah god and and i guess that's a beautiful thing about god is no matter what you've done in your life mm -hmm. he will still show up show up yeah that's the god we serve he's a he's a like he'll show up <laughs> he's a merciful god a gracious god like i can't fathom or begin to comprehend how great and loving he is mm -hmm. so but to be honest we sat here and we just said like let god take the lead just we just had a title the, no notes nothing we're just like we're gonna the title is amazing the title was, all we had was a title for this video we sat here we're just like god's gonna take the lead and let's just have a conversation and i feel like it's so like authentic yeah you know? but i mean i think but again like i think all of what we spoke about today like it ties into like you know like i've loved mm -hmm. but i've never been in love yeah so I think everything that we spoke about, we talked about everything that we loved, people, yeah. the things, the trips, the what have you, like, you know, yeah. so we've loved all of it, mm -hmm. but God was something that we, you know, it's like, but we've never been in love. Mm -hmm. And so that missing piece was like, again, like your yes. love for God and like mm -hmm. faith and mm -hmm. intention, obedience, yeah. mm -hmm. patience, mm -hmm. silence, solitude. Yep. Being vulnerable with the right people. Yeah, yes. and that's just amazing. So you've heard us talk, and I know that a lot of you can identify with everything that we said, and a lot of you are still going through some of the things that we've experienced and are going through. And I just want to say, like I always say here on this channel, don't lose hope, don't lose heart, God, because God, God does His best work when we really, truly surrender to Him. <sighs> like I'm so excited. God, God does His best work in dirt. Mm. As he created Adam and Eve yes. from the dust of the earth, like you know what I'm saying, like so we gonna look like that. We gonna exactly. So just be open and just allow God to work in you. We're definitely gonna be back again. Yeah, this was awesome. Thanks so much for having Girl, me. Girl, you are welcome. You are anytime. So we're definitely gonna be back again. This is not the last time you're gonna see her. That's for sure. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you again, Casey, for coming. No problem. Coming, coming. Oh my God. I'm so, like, I don't know. Like, I don't It'll know be what, a series. I don't know what it is. When I, I don't know what it is. When I see you, there's an excitement for you. Like, Am I winning the lottery? Because I'm going to no, share it with like, you. <laughs> God is doing amazing things in your life. Oh. That's, I just, I feel it. I, I know it. Like, you haven't even seen the half of it yet. The girl, no. You, like, you haven't even seen tasted a glimpse of it yet. like god is gonna do such amazing things in your life and your story and you know from um hinduism to christianity yeah. like god is gonna use that to touch many people wow and i'm excited for you like i'm Just telling wait. you like this one's a threat to the kingdom of darkness watch out devil mm. but yeah guys don't i'll link her instagram down below and her baptism as well so you can see the picture of what she was really telling yeah. you guys about but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on your notification um, bell to know when I post a video. And I love you guys, and I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye! I thank God for the best